I now own two Disney Vacation Club contracts, one I bought on the resale market and one I bought directly through Disney. Let's compare and contrast my experience. Before we get started, I wanted to say I appreciate that you're here so much. Thank you to everyone who interacts with the channel by liking the video, subscribing, ringing the bell to turn on notifications, commenting down below, and sharing. It truly means a lot and helps the channel grow. In this video, we're going to be comparing my experience buying a resale contract versus one buying a contract directly from Disney. It's worth noting though that these were only my experiences, your mileage may vary. Plus I do only have one resale contract from one resale company and one direct contract from Disney. For anyone new to the channel and as a brief reminder for the channel's old friends, I do have two contracts. I bought my first in August of 2020 on the resale market. This is a Bay Lake Tower home contract with 90 points. Then more recently, I bought into Villas at Disneyland Hotel when it went on sale in May of 2023. I purchased this directly through Disney for 150 points. In both cases, my partner and I pay for the contract fully in cash. We did not have financing, we didn't need to secure a lender, we didn't need a notary. We also lived in a place that let us do all of our document signatures electronically. If you can't sign electronically or need a notary, your timelines and overall experience may differ somewhat significantly from what I went through. Let's first look at initial cost. In August of 2020, an offer was accepted on a Bay Lake Tower resale contract for $146 per point. It is worth noting that this contract was stripped, so I bought it in August of 2020. It had an August use year. There were no August 2020 points on it. For my Villas at Disneyland Hotel contract, that debuted at $230 a point when buying directly through Disney. If you bought 150 points, you did receive a $20 per point incentive, bringing the price down to $210 per point. Then through a promotion called Magical Beginnings, you could effectively choose to strip your contract. You could sell back your first use year's worth of points to Disney at a rate of $22 per point. That would bring the effective cost down to $188 per point. That being said, the Magical Beginnings promotion expressly was a rebate. I did still owe $210 per point, and then later in the mail I got a check for the Magical Beginnings amount. On the resale contract, in addition to the price per point, I was responsible also for paying closing costs. This brought the total to $13,750. Similarly, with Villas at Disneyland Hotel, I was responsible for the price per point, in this case $210 per point, and the closing costs. This left my total at a little bit under $32,000. And then later in the mail, I did receive a check for $3,300 from that Magical Beginnings promotion. You can of course use that $3,300 for whatever you want. I personally did apply it to the credit card bill for charging this timeshare purchase. So again, I did actually owe Disney a little under $32,000, but they did send me back $3,300 later. In my mind, that made our effective purchase price about $28,500. In my opinion, it's not particularly fair just to compare the total costs because the Bay Lake Tower contract was only 90 points and the Villas at Disneyland Hotel contract was 150 points. For my Bay Lake Tower resale contract, if we took the total cost plus the closing costs and divided that out by the 90 points for the contract, this left us at about $153 per point. For the Villas at Disneyland Hotel contract, incorporating everything I paid, so the price per point plus the closing costs, but also subtracting out that rebate I got, that puts us at about $191 per point. There's also a couple steps to paying whether you buy resale or direct. In both cases, you have to provide a deposit and then there's the remainder of your balance. When buying the resale contract, I was able to make the deposit via a credit card without incurring any sort of fee for using a credit card. This deposit had to be at least 10%, but in my case, for my specific contract, I was told it should be no more than $2,000. We did deposit just the 10%. When buying directly through Disney, again, the deposit needed to be at least 10% and you could use credit cards for all of your payments, deposit and remainder. This time we did considerably more than 10% because we knew we were going to pay this off aggressively. After you do your deposits, there is the remainder of the balance to pay. For the resale contract, we paid off the rest of our balance via a wire transfer. Note that different banks do have different rules about wire transfers, how much you can transfer and what the fees are, etc. My partner and I have bank accounts at a slew of different banks, so we did some research to find out what would be the cheapest and easiest for us. In our case, that was using USAA Bank. For wires within the country, USAA was able to do very large sums of money for just a small fee, I believe it was $20. When we looked at other banks, some had limits of $5,000 or $10,000 and some had much higher fees. If you are looking to purchase Disney Vacation Club on the resale market and want to pay in cash, just keep the wire transfer limitations and fees in mind. For our direct purchase through Disney, we could put everything on credit cards, so that's what we did. I should note, I think most resale companies will actually let you pay the remainder on credit cards, but it will come with a 2.5 or 3% fee, of which I really don't think that's worth it. Moving on, let's talk timelines. The resale contract's a bit of a drawn out process. The contract was listed on August 7th, we put our offer in on August 9th, and it was accepted that day. Disney waived its right of first refusal in mid-September and we got our actual DVC membership on October 23rd. Vacation points were then loaded into our account the next day. All in all, this took about two and a half months start to finish. This is in pretty direct contrast to buying directly through Disney. I called my Disney Vacation Club guide, that's the name for the salesperson, the day that Villas at Disneyland Hotel went on sale. We filled out paperwork, again electronically, sent over more than the deposit amount required, set up a payment schedule for the remainder of the balance, and that was it. 
My contract was executed the same day I called, the points were loaded into my account the same day I called. There's really no comparison there. If you shop on the resale market, it's gonna take at least a couple months versus if you buy directly through Disney, it's probably a couple days max. Those were some items that are fairly easy to measure, but let's talk about some qualitative aspects. This is a large purchase, it's a real estate transaction, and Disney Vacation Club all in all is quite the process. My experience with the resale company was there was no central point person who I could contact with questions. I was passed around to six different people, a seventh was named at one point who I never had contact with. It was kind of all a mess. You'll probably also be in contact with people who work both at the resale company and the title company, and it was never abundantly clear to me who I should go if I had questions. Pretty much the opposite is true if you buy directly through Disney. You are assigned a Disney Vacation Club guide, again your salesperson, that's the person you're supposed to talk to at all times. You can of course also just call up DVC member services depending on what type of question you have, but between your guide's phone number and the general member services phone number, you should be covered. Closing costs is an interesting one, at least for the resale company I worked with, they list closing costs on the listing page. So before you even put an offer in on a resale contract, you know approximately what the closing costs will be. In my experience buying directly from Disney, closing costs were a mystery. I had to ask my guide what the closing costs would be, and honestly they seemed a little annoyed that that was something I wanted to know. If you buy directly through Disney when you get your contract, even if you don't get the closing cost number from your guide, the closing costs will be listed on your contract, so you will know at some point or another. I just personally wanted to know what it was before I was going to receive a contract. And there's many, many forms to fill out. It doesn't really matter if you're buying through resale or directly through Disney, you're going to be filling out forms. In my case, for the resale company I worked with at the time, again in 2020, a little bit of it was on DocuSign, you could do everything electronically, but I was sent a lot of things that seemed like they had been printed out and scanned in and then I was given the copy of the scan. It wasn't even a form freshly made in a word processor and then converted to a fillable PDF. Filling out some of those forms from the resale company was pretty frustrating. In contrast, at least in my case with buying directly through DVC, everything was online via DocuSign, so everything was fillable. DocuSign prompted me exactly where I had to initial, where I had to date, where I had to sign. It was great. But in both cases, we had some errors. When I bought my resale contract, it was stripped, meaning there were no points for the current use year. The first time I got contractual language, it had listed that there were points in that use year. I had to point that out. The resale company did apologize profusely and fix it right away, so really no harm, no foul, but the error was made. Additionally, there were just a lot of typos throughout their forms. They weren't things that had meaningful impact by any means, but I thought it was odd. For both of these purchases, my partner and I are both listed on the deed. The resale company had a form we had to fill out in the beginning processes that said how we wanted to be listed, if we were legally married or not. This was something that my DVC guide when I purchased directly from Disney missed. We had to clarify that in a later conversation. Additionally, for my direct purchase through Disney, I found out in mid-July that something happened, there was an error in a form and it was recorded with Orange County incorrectly. We started the process of buying that contract in early May, it closed on June 1st, all of our payments were done, and then it took another six weeks for me to find out there was an error in the way it was recorded with the county. I don't really know whose fault that is, but either way, I ran into document errors both on the resale process and buying directly through Disney. Read your documents really carefully. From my personal experience of the process, I also feel like there was a lot left to be desired for transparency, both through the resale company and directly through Disney. All in all, I had to ask a lot of questions, be very proactive, and ask for a lot of clarification. These were things like fees, if we paid with a credit card versus a wire transfer. For the resale process specifically, where exactly we were at in that process, they let me know it would take 50 to 80 days total, but they didn't always let me know like, oh, we're past the estoppel certificate, or oh, right of first refusal has been waived, that kind of stuff. In both cases, I had to ask if we were allowed to sign electronically or if they needed to be wet signatures. And generally speaking, both times the instructions were not the most clear, though I do think the resale process suffered from that more than directly through Disney. In terms of transparency when you're buying directly through Disney, I think it's going to depend a ton on your point person who is your DVC guide. I've talked about this on the channel before, I will leave a link to that video in the description below, but I was really unimpressed with the DVC guide that I was assigned. We had some issues, so I'm guessing my experience purchasing directly through Disney was below average. I think most people probably have a better time than I did. But all that's to say is it really didn't feel like it mattered if I was buying resale or buying directly through Disney. The onus of communication was fully on me at all times. And that was onus about everything. Again, fees, signatures, how much are we actually paying, what are closing costs, and also basic things about how does Disney Vacation Club work? Luckily, before I bought resale or direct, I had done a lot, a lot of research, and so I had a very solid knowledge foundation of how Disney Vacation Club works. I will say that most reputable resale sites actually do have some really good documentation on this. There's great FAQs both for buyers and sellers about Disney Vacation Club. Also, at least in my case, the primary staff I interacted with at the resale company were really knowledgeable. I think a lot of resale companies try to only hire people who previously worked at DVC, so they do know what they're talking about for the most part. 
I have interacted with a few brokers at various resale companies and I will say I have been pretty unimpressed with them. But when you're making a purchase, it's somewhat unlikely you'd be dealing directly with the broker. You're probably dealing with comm staff, marketing staff, sales staff, and for the most part, I would say they're pretty good. And in terms of DVC knowledge for the person you're speaking with directly at DVC, again, it really depends on your guide. The guide I was assigned didn't know anything. He didn't even know how borrowing points worked. So that was not great. That being said, your guide again is on the sales team. If you have questions about how Disney Vacation Club actually works, I would call member services. Those people, generally speaking, are really helpful and know what they're talking about. If we're gonna do the direct comparison of my experience buying resale versus my experience buying direct, and basically probably what you could expect if you did one or the other, I do think direct wins out. 99% of the time, the initial cost of buying a contract is going to be lower through the resale market than if you buy directly through Disney. In my case, really the only reason we bought directly through Disney is we really wanted villas at Disneyland Hotel, which is a brand new resort. So the resale market doesn't really exist for it yet. But that actual process of buying it is probably easier and definitely faster if you go directly through Disney. In our case, we could pay fully on credit cards, which is much simpler and honestly less stressful than doing a wire transfer. Our points loaded to our account literally in one day when we bought direct compared to, I think, 77 days when we bought on the resale market. If you're buying directly through Disney, you are assigned a point person. I did not like my point person, but I hope that wouldn't be true for most of you. Some resale companies may have a singular point person. That just wasn't my experience with the company I worked with. And the ease of forms when you're buying directly through Disney was great. Everything came via DocuSign. Super fast, simple, easy, obvious, no complaints. Again, that may be true at different resale companies, or maybe even the resale company I work with has updated their processes in the past three years. But at least for what I went through, I felt like some of the form situation was frustrating. In terms of some of those squishier measures like errors and qualitative stuff like communication, transparency, DVC knowledge, etc. In my specific case, I guess I would give that to the resale company. But again, I think this has a lot to do with the DVC guide you're assigned and I was very unhappy with mine. And we didn't really mention this in this video at all, but it is worth noting that if you buy a resale contract, you will be a resale restricted member. If you're buying a resale contract at Riviera Resort or anything newer than that, you will only be able to use those points at that resort. You won't be able to use them at any of the other resorts. And if you're buying a resale contract at another resort, say Bay Lake Tower, or Old Key West, etc., you can use those at the original resorts, but not at Riviera Resort or anything newer. Plus, you just generally don't qualify for membership benefit extras. These are things like Moonlight Magic, discounts on dining, discounts on shopping, etc. I personally don't think that these restrictions and membership extras are such huge factors that they should heavily weigh your decision to buy resale or direct, but you may feel differently. All in all, if you were asking me if you should buy resale or direct, I think the answer is it's going to depend a lot. For a contract listed on the resale market at a specific resale company, well, what's that resale company like? Are they helpful, knowledgeable, are they communicative, how are their forums, how transparent are they with fees, all that kind of stuff. And if you're looking at buying directly through Disney, honestly, a lot of the same questions apply about who your DVC guide is. Are they helpful, knowledgeable, communicative, transparent? Mine was not. Some of this will also depend on you and how much research you've done. How much do you already know? How confident are you in buying this product and understanding what you're buying into? If you have a deep foundational knowledge of Disney Vacation Club and how it works, that will also help you spot out staff people, whether that be at resale companies or directly within Disney, who are not knowledgeable. In terms of the whole process of buying a contract, whether that's a resale contract or directly through Disney, how persistent are you? How proactive are you? How much communication are you expecting? And certainly on the resale market, I do think there's a question of how patient are you? Do you just want points right now or can you wait for the right contract to come up? And then even once that comes up, can you wait another two or three months for your points to load? I think it's pretty fair to say that the overall process of buying a contract just is easier directly through Disney. The question then becomes, is that worth the upcharge in initial price? Your initial purchase price for a contract directly through Disney is almost always going to be considerably higher than if you bought effectively that same contract on the resale market. For me personally, I'm still very happy that we bought Bay Lake Tower on the resale market. It made it monetarily obtainable at that time. Our contract would have been, I believe, almost $8,000 more had we bought it directly through Disney. We also personally didn't need the points right away, so I knew it would take several months and that wasn't a problem for me at all. And obviously being a restricted resale member that didn't get any of those extra magical benefits or perks was not my favorite, but those were pretty minor, all things considered. The membership extras were not enough to entice me to pay many thousands of dollars more directly through Disney rather than buy the contract on the resale market and be restricted. And to some extent, that's easy for me to say now because we do now have 150 points directly through Disney for that Villas at Disneyland hotel contract. So we are full members that qualify for membership extras. That being said, we had a couple years as restricted members and it really didn't make a big difference. And even now that I am a full member, I definitely would be sticking to resale in the future. I personally don't anticipate we'll be buying more points, but if we did, I don't see any reason to do them direct, honestly. I think the monetary savings of buying on the resale market and any sort of extra hassle there might be are totally worth it. 
And yes, you would need to spend a little bit of time, probably every other day or so, browsing resale sites to see if the contract you want is listed anywhere. But for me, once I got in the hang of it of checking the same handful of sites every day, it didn't take very long and honestly, it was kind of fun. And once you find a resale contract you want, you put in an offer and it's accepted, then you have all those other steps to go through and that will take two to three months, maybe even longer in some circumstances. And yes, that is a long time, but most of that is hands-off time. There's very little active time you're putting into this. So I certainly am willing to wait a few months to get my points if it means I'm saving 10 grand. For me, I think both buying resale and direct had pros and cons. At the end of the day, I still feel like the most important thing is to buy where you want to stay, so focus on your home resort. That's really what dictated us buying resale versus direct both times. We wanted a home resort at Bay Lake Tower. There was plenty of Bay Lake Tower on the resale market, so we went that direction. Then we wanted a home resort at Villas at Disneyland Hotel, a brand new resort, so you kind of have to buy directly through Disney. If you have any questions about my experience buying Disney Vacation Club contracts on the resale market or directly through Disney, leave those in the comments down below. And if you've been through both these processes, I would love to hear what you think. Additionally, if you've purchased Disney Vacation Club contracts only through one method, either only resale or only directly through Disney, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that too. Are you hesitant to do it the other way? Why is that? I think every person in travel party has their own specific considerations, so for some of you, resale will be right, and for some of you, direct will make more sense. If you are juggling that decision right now, I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching, I hope the rest of your day is magical, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.